right on target about what we're talking about. Holy Spirit, fill this place. Ever wonder what would happen if God really did? If He poured out His Spirit? I'm telling you, something would change. We would change. Well, let's dive right into this. Uh, some of you may want to take notes. Uh, if you are single and 
uh, looking for a wife, you may want to take notes. I'm going to tell you how I asked Betty to marry her, marry me, and uh, so you, you may just want, and if you've got children, grandchildren want to know how to do this. I got down on my knees and I said, Betty, I want you to know I love you with half my heart. And uh, I brought along with me, this is my lawyer, and he's got a codicil that's going to go on the wed marriage license in case the half that I like you gets diminished some way, this is my way out. No, I didn't do that. I would still be single. That's craziness. Nobody wants to know about half-hearted love. How about this story? This is one about wholehearted love may have heard of this story uh, by some guy named uh, Bill Shakespeare, I think, uh, Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet are from feuding families, opposite families, but they see each other and it's just one of those electric moments, they fall in love. And then you remember the famous scene where she's, uh, Juliet is out on the porch and she's saying out to the sky, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? She's not asking, Romeo, Romeo, where are you? She's saying, Romeo, Romeo, why on earth are you Romeo? Why you, couldn't you be somebody else so that we could get together instead of having all these problems? Well, problems they did have. Finally, they decided uh, that they would seek a way to, to escape together. Somebody gives a Juliet, a sleeping potion, and it makes it appear that she's dead. Well, Romeo shows up and looks at her and thinks, she's dead, so he kills himself. At which point, she wakes up and she says, hmm, he's dead, and so he, she kills herself. It's a bad story, really, when you think about it in that way, and yet, why is it we're always captivated by it? It's because they were wholehearted in their love. You might say their love was all in, no holding back. I, 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 do you remember the kid uh, who was talking to his girlfriend? The girlfriend asked him, said, would you climb the highest mountain for me? He said, oh, yes. Would you swim the widest ocean? Oh, yes. Would you die for me? He said, oh, no. <laughs> and she said, no. He said, no, mine is an undying love. <laughs> well, today, let's take a look at what real love is all about. And as we are talking about the subject of all in, we're talking about the subject of being wholehearted, let's take a look at this passage where somebody comes and asks Jesus a question, and he answers them. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply, they met together to question him again. One of them, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must Love the Lord your God with, say the next word, all your heart and your soul and all your mind. Jesus replied, this is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. What an incredible word God gives to us there. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. You know, there's a certain horror in half-heartedness, isn't there? In the book of Revelation, there are two chapters, chapters 2 and 3, in which Jesus speaks to seven churches in Asia Minor, today's Turkey, and He talks to them about different things. One of the saddest is a church called Laodicea, and he says, you know, you guys, I wish you were hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'll just spit you out of my mouth. Now, the people back then would have understood exactly what Jesus was talking about, because outside of Laodicea, it was very famous, there were two springs. One was a cold spring, bringing fresh cold water into the town. The other was a hot spring that would bring hot water in that they could use to, use to bathe and so on. And what Jesus said is, you know, the cold spring is good when it's cold, and the hot spring is good when it's hot. But if you all wind up lukewarm, it's like, pff, just spit it out of your mouth. I was talking with Josh Harrell, our uh, media guy, and Josh said, you know, every time I hear that, I think of a lukewarm hot dog. 
And Jesus just going, <laughs> well, I don't know if any of you have seen uh, War Room. If you have not, I would encourage you to go. It is a wonderful uh, movie about prayer. There's this brilliant moment in, in the movie where this elderly lady is trying to explain to the younger woman what it's like to be hot for Jesus. She said, you know, would you describe your Jesus, your relationship with Jesus as hot? And she said, well, it's, it's sort of warm. And so the, the older lady says, let me go fix you a, a cup of coffee. So she fixes two cups of coffee, and hers is piping hot. But she only fills the other ladies about half full and then puts some tap water in there. So the young lady says, well, thank you. And so she takes a sip of this and just kind of spits it back out and says, something's wrong with this coffee. And she says, you're exactly right. It's lukewarm, and nobody wants lukewarm. Jesus is trying to tell us he doesn't have much use for lukewarm Christians. It's the kind of thing that just makes you just want to spit it out. It's something that doesn't have any value. Jesus says, I wish you had hot or cold. I wish you were something. But instead, it's just this sort of lukewarm, tasteless yuck. I seem to have come back to this guy on multiple occasions, but you remember the rich young ruler who came to Jesus and said, I want to follow you, and Jesus said, good, but go sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and then come follow me, and the guy turns away. Here's the point I want to bring out of that today. He really liked Jesus, and he probably had a great appreciation for the vision Jesus had, maybe even sort of wanted to be a part of it, but he was half-hearted about it. Now, this would be a good point to stop and say, ladies, men don't really get expensive perfume, you know, and we don't understand that whole concept. But I'm telling you, as strange as that may be in our time, this stuff, I have no idea what it was like, but it cost about a year's wages to buy this one bottle of perfume. And Betty, don't even get any ideas, sweetheart. <laughs> but, I mean, this is just, wow, can you imagine? But here's the thing. This woman doesn't come to Jesus and say, now this stuff is really, really expensive, Jesus, so I'm just going to pour out a couple of drops. We find she breaks the jar and pours it all out and says the fragrance fills the whole house. That's all in. That's wholehearted kind of love. But there's some old crab in that house who says, well, I can't believe. We could have sold that stuff, gotten a bunch of bucks, and we could have helped somebody else. I'm telling you, that's half-hearted kind of stuff. And Jesus is looking for people who are wholehearted. There was a little boy whose um, eyesight left because of a disease that he contracted. Well, there wasn't anything to be done about it, but there was a doctor some years down the way who discovered a cure, an operation that would restore the eyesight. So the parents sold everything they had in order to get up enough money to pay for the boy to have surgery. So they sent him off to this far distant city, went there, the doctor did the surgery, and lo and behold, he got his eyesight back. And the boy, as the doctor was dismissing him from the hospital, just about shook the man's hand off. And he said, Doc, I'm telling you, when I get home, they'll never hear the last of you. That's all in gratitude that leads to all in love. So how do we get that? How do we get that all in love for God, that all in love for one another? It can only happen when God pours out into our hearts the love of God through the Holy Spirit. So could we ask for God to do that right now? I'm not sending you out saying, come on, try harder, drum it up. Could we just open our hearts to God? I think some of us are afraid to do that. Afraid, well, there's just no telling what God might do. Well, you know what? There is no telling what God might do. But all in kind of love says, God, whatever you want. Would you pray with me? Well, Father, there is nobody in the world who is excited about anything that anybody does half-heartedly. Nobody cares about half-hearted love. Nobody cares about half-hearted effort. That's just useless. 
What we want, what you've put in us is a deep and abiding longing to be wholehearted, to be all in. Well, God, we might as well be honest here and confess. Our love isn't wholehearted. We aren't all in. But we're asking, would you in this moment do something for, for us Make us willing to open our hearts, just open our hearts, and let the Holy Spirit pour out the love of God into them. This is our prayer today, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm going to invite you to stand, and let's just sing the first verse of our closing hymn. It's, Oh, How I Love Jesus, and let's sing this to Him with our whole hearts. light of Christ out in the world. That's just an example, a symbol of what we're supposed to do. So I'm going to ask you to join hands with each other. And when we do that, we remind ourselves we love each other, we share together the love of God. And I'm going to ask you to do something really, really hard for some of you before you go. And that is, after we've ha- received the blessing and after the choir has sung for us, I'm going to ask you to turn to the, some folks around you Give them a hug and say, I love you. Now, some of you think you will crack if you do that. <laughs> I mean, I, I've, I've seen you. I've, you know, you say, I, I love. It, it's hard to say. Love. But give it a shot. I love you. And when you share the love of Christ with one another, there's just no telling what God may do in our world. So, brothers and sisters, go in God's grace be filled with the Holy Spirit, be filled with the love of Christ. And wherever you go, may the love of Christ in you flow through you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm.